Hey guys, Errol over here at Finest. Today I want to um, show you how I harvest lettuce, some of what I do with it, and answer a couple questions I got about um, vegetables and stuff in general. So you can see there's some holes in here. There's some lettuces that have completely gone to seed and they're done for the year. And um, just I've been harvesting it for months now. So there's holes where I've cut heads out. But I do want to show you something. If the camera sees this one, this, where you can kind of see those are smaller heads, more just loose leaves. That has grown back on one of these bigger heads that I had harvested earlier. And here's one that I harvested more recently. I don't know if you can see that, um, but I can see just the little tiny starts of new sprouts coming out of that. So it does come back. Now gone to seed means more like these guys over here, I can actually see a flower starting in the top. The leaves will grow for a while and then when it starts to bolt upright, instead of being kind of low like this um, and go up straight like that, it's going to make a flower and make seeds and reproduce for its next year, which is fine. Once it does that though, usually the, the leaves get a little bit tough and a little bit more bitter and you don't want to eat them anymore. So I'm just going to let them go to seed if it actually gets the whole way to making mature seeds, which it probably won't, before it um, freezes to death, then I would harvest them and keep them and plant them next year. I just don't usually have quite enough time for them to mature, but I'm not gonna eat that one anymore, but it's not hurting anything, so it's just gonna stay right there. So I wanna have a salad tonight, and I am going to harvest some heads of lettuce. Now, this variety grows in kind of a nice head like that. This is some kind of butter crunch. I've planted a bunch of different ones, I forget. But I'm just going to cut it out of there. I'm going to leave the bottom leaves right there, shading the dirt and such. And if it had time, if I'd cut this a month ago, like some of these others, it would make new baby lettuces there. Now, as you can see, I like growing all kinds of colors. I like the mixtures of, you know, the colors and textures and nutrients and all of that stuff. So I've got that butter crunchy type. This is kind of a, a reddish tipped pointy leaf one. I could look up all the <clears throat> names, I don't remember. And again, the same thing down through here. There was a head beside here I cut recently. There's one here I cut earlier that has nice little lettuce leaves coming up already. Um, down here I've got another one that's going to seed. I can see it's making a seed head there. This variety, so I'm just going to cut one of these heads that hasn't yet. Come on down. To, this is maybe, I think this is called ruby something. This is one of my favorite lettuce leaves because it's such a, a pretty um, curly Q red color. I just think they're beautiful and I like the mix, like I said, of all the colors. So I'm going to put some red in there. These are smaller heads. I'm going to pick a couple of them. And if some of the outside lettuce leaves, what I was doing there is just so the very bottom ones got a little beat up or a little bit dirty or maybe have a one or two bug holes in them. I'm just going to let them lay there. When I clean up the garden later, it'll go in the compost, but in the meantime, it could just rot into the soil. A lot of these are starting to go to seed. I'm not sure if I'm going to cut any of them anymore. Down here, these are my strawberry spinaches. They make this little seed head on top. I showed you that last in the last video. I am going to pick some of them to put on top of my salad, but not the leaves anymore because they have gone to seed as well. These little strawberry-like things are their seed head, and so the, the spinach leaves, while they would have been good earlier in the year, are now going to be a little bit tough and bitter. So I'm going to pass on eating them. Cut some of these yellow curly leaves. Gonna pick because these grow a bigger leaf and not so much a head. Isn't that a pretty color? I'm going to pick some of these. I think this is called red ochre lettuce leaf, um, something like that. Anyway, it's a really brilliant deep purple. And, and in vegetables, um, if the the more more bright and intense the colors are, often the um, the stronger the nutrients and antioxidants and all of those are and the different colors have different ones this doesn't count if you're drinking like mountain dew that is bright green with artificial dyes or lifesavers or something else but if it's a plant a vegetable a root a leaf 
and it has colors in it, it, uh, it probably is, has more and different um, nutrients than the other color. So I've got, you know, dark red there. I've got a bright purple here. I've got various shades of green and reddish green. And again, that patch is mostly gone to seed now. I had another real dark red one there and I've eaten all of it because not quite as many of them sprouted. And then here's another one that's um, kind of a speckly green and I don't know, green and reddish speckle, something like that. So I've got a nice basket full of lettuce. And to harvest, I just find it easiest to use my knife like this. These are those little Rata cutlery um, stainless steel knives that work amazing for all kinds. Of, I use them like every day, but I use them for harvesting lettuce. I'm going to go and shut side and show you what I do with it now. And also, before I go inside and wash that, I forgot, I usually like to mix some herbs just in with my salad greens as well, just for different flavors and nutrients and textures. And most of my herbs are growing right around the house here in my flower bed. So I'm just going to pick a little bit. These are tend to be much, um, much stronger, more concentrated flavors than a big lettuce leaf. So I don't need a lot. I just pick some sage leaves because that's a sage plant growing there. Let me see what else I've got hiding in here. This one's tarragon. i just pinch off a few of the top little leaves. And when you just pinch off the, uh, the little tops of the stems like that, it just gets bushier and bushier all summer and, and grows more. Um, so parsley. Parsley grows really well here for me. And a little bit like its cousin cilantro. It's good at detoxifying heavy metals. So definitely want some parsley in there. Got some oregano back here. Let's pinch off some of its tops. Goes in. Got a little bit of rosemary. You could also use rosemary as a little bit stiffer one. You could use the scissors and snip these, but usually with taking just the top, which is pretty tender, I can just pinch it. Got another parsley plant here. I've got a lot of those. Um, more parsley. Oh, I've got another kind of sage down here. It's got a purple and green leaf instead of a plain green leaf. I'll take a couple of his leaves. And more parsley. I've got a little curry plant in here. Um, that I don't really want that flavor in my salad. I just, I like it with other things. So anyway, I've got just a little bucket of herbs and I'm going to take that inside with my lettuces. Okay, so now I've brought my two buckets of stuff inside. I am just going to fill up my sink. Yes, that is, if you're new here, that is my uh, water pump running. Your house probably has one too, or else the city does if you're on city water. You just don't hear it because it's not right beside you, and in my house it is. Okay, so I put everything in my sink with a little bit of water, and my lettuce is usually pretty clean. It gets a little bit of dust on it if we get a hard rain and the dirt kind of splatters up onto it, but it's not bad. And occasionally there's a little bug in it. People ask me about bugs. One advantage of living somewhere where you uh, get frost so often, so middle of the summer and so early and late, is most bugs um, that are garden type bug pests don't really survive. So, a couple things here. Um, for one, if I was picking the, uh, if I was picking greens to make a salad earlier in the year, I would have also picked some chard and kale leaves because they're still pretty tender and when they're little babies and I like them in my salad fresh. At this point in the year, they're getting bigger and tougher and so I prefer them cooked in other ways, not so much fresh. But for half the summer at least, I have kale and chard leaves in with my whole mixture of lettuce colors too. And it's also a good idea with a lot of a lot of things, but especially leafy things like lettuces, to do your picking very early in the morning um, because everything is usually nice and crispy still and hasn't wilted from the sun. If it is a little wilted, that's not the end of the world. You can just put it in a sink of water like this, walk off and do whatever else you're going to do, come back in an hour or so, we'll have kind of soaked up some of the moisture in the water and gotten crispier again. But if you can pick early in the morning or sometimes late evening, um, that works well. Now what I do is I just kind of shake all my leaves around in there just a little bit and then start pulling them out of the water. 
Now I don't have a salad spinner. They take a good bit of space because you got this big round container um, that isn't really good for doing anything but salad spinning in general. And so I'm going to show you what I use. But again, I'm just kind of rinsing all the leaves off because they are not very dirty. And they're pretty crispy, so I'm not needing to work them. So drain off all the extra moisture that I can there. Grab all my little herbs. I, the house already smells like sage and parsley and stuff just from having picked those little bits of it. It's the biggest head. tarragon tips down in there still. Okay, so what I've done is I've put them in one of these white claws. I should have showed you before I did that. I've got a bunch of these um, flower sack towels is what they're called. It wasn't a good demo one. This one I've used a lot. It's stained. They're normally pure white. <laughs> um, I have quite a stack of them and this one clearly I've been using a lot. But it's just a real simple cotton um, towel and I use these for all kinds of things. That's what it looked like, and this is what I do with it when I'm washing lettuce. I've dropped all my washed leaves into here, and I just grab the four corners, make a bag. You can see it's dripping water out there from the moisture. I'm going to take this outside and show you out there. So, bring that bag outside, set it back in that basket to catch the rips as I was walking out. And now I'm going to employ the um, use of centrifugal force, just like a salad spinner would. A salad spinner, you crank the handle or push the button or whatever style you have, and it spins the middle around really fast and all the water flings off around the outside. I'm going to simply do that by doing this. I can hear water drops spraying off. If you want to get really energetic, you can do this fast. You can turn around and sling it the other way. You could probably hear the water drops. I don't know if in the sunlight they're showing up, um, flying off, but if you have a ton of lettuce in here at once, you can try to not drop it out like I just did. I was going to say you can kind of fluff it up and rearrange it for any leaves that are getting stuck, but I don't usually bother. I really just put it in here, grab the four corners, and sling it in a circle till I quit hearing and seeing any little water drops flying off. And at that point, it's pretty dry. And the only reason this really matters is because if you're gonna have lettuce in the fridge for a little bit or you wanna put a salad dressing on it and it's wet, it'll get slimy if it stays in the fridge too long. And if you do like a vinaigrette salad dressing with oil in it, because oil and water don't mix, the oil will just all slide off your wet lettuce leaves. So, we got that pretty dry. I don't see, yeah, there's still a couple water drops, but that works. Now my towel can go back to being useful at doing other towel things. It folds flat to store, even if I used it for nothing else. You know, this big bulky plastic salad spinner. And it's not plastic, which I also like. Head it back inside. Okay, so now I've got my dry lettuce. All in my nice flower sack towel here. Isn't that just gorgeous colors? And because I don't want to, you know, eat leaves that size in my salad or whole heads like this one, I'm going to tear it up. So let's get one of my glass bowls. Came from an antique, some, or not antique, from a thrift store somewhere for a couple bucks. Um, you probably know this, but if you cut lettuce with a metal knife, the edges tend to turn brown. If you're in a hurry and you're making something for a dinner that's happening in like 10 minutes, which is something I will admit I have done, just go ahead and use a knife if you want because it's not going to even have time to turn brown before um, it's already eaten. But most of the time what I do is, and I've got my herbs and stuff in here too, I'm doing the same thing with all of them, the, that's a parsley stem and I don't want all the stemmies because that's a little tough, but I want all the little leaf parts like that, um, is just tear them up with your fingers. Super quick and easy. 
I've had friends over with kids. Um, they like tearing up lettuce. It's fun. It's fun to see all the pretty colors. This also gives me a chance to look at every leaf. On some of the bigger leaves, like that one I just did like this, the bottom stem here is now a little tough. Kind of like I said, I don't so much like the raw kale in my salad anymore at this time of year. When these were littler, that wouldn't have been tough, but now it is, so I'm just kind of pulling that out as I go. And just tearing these all into kind of bite-sized <coughs> chunks to make my awesome salad. And so already in here, and I will show you guys um, in probably a separate video so this doesn't get too crazy long because this is just how I get my greens. We'll stick with that for one, but I'll show you what I do with making a salad. But yeah, already without adding anything else at all to this, we've got like five different kinds of herbs and like six different kinds of lettuce leaves and so on. And so we have a lot of, usually I get little pine needles that blow off the trees into my lettuces. Um, all kinds of different nutrients and vitamins and minerals and everything in our salad just as we have it right here. And if you don't care about any of that, at the very least, we have a very pretty and attractive looking mixture of leaves with all the reds and greens and purples and all of that stuff. So that is how I got another pine needle. They don't wash out very well because they're too big and long. That's one reason to, to handle this, um, you know, a leaf at a time. So that's, that's what I do for picking lettuces, greens. I guess, you know, not everything is actually a lettuce and I use greens all year long for lots of things, but especially in the summer when I've got lots of them growing in my garden, I use gobs and gobs of them. And so that is how I harvest them. That's a little bit of info on what lettuces, plants going to seed looks like and an easy way to dry your lettuce without having to have a salad spinner. Hopefully you learned some tips and can go make some awesome salads for your dinner. Thanks for watching folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.